In this tutorial in Cyberlink PowerDirector, we're going to look at some tips for using a tool called the Beat Detector to enhance our project. What I'm going to do is take this clip of downtown Dallas, a nice aerial shot, and then we're going to talk about Dallas Works to promote working in the Dallas area. And to do that, I'm going to superimpose some other images over this picture, but I'll use that picture in picture and tie it in with the music that we're going to add. Let me give you an example of the nearly finished product to look at, and then we'll show you how we use the beat detector to get part of the way to that objective. Okay, the first thing I want to do is take this clip of Metro Dallas and drop it on track number one. Now we're going to take our music file. I can drop it on any audio track I want. I'll just put it on the other half of track number one, the audio track. And then if I go ahead and play, hit the space bar or the right arrow key. I have a problem to start with because the first few uh, frames of my audio clip are blank. So I'm going to highlight the audio clip, do Control T to cut it there, highlight the first part, and do Control Alt X to remove it and fill the gap. And so now if I go ahead and play, that's just what I'm looking for. Now. In order to paste the other items I want on the screen, I'm going to need to use the beat detector. I could do it manually, but this will save some time. So I highlight my audio track, and then I right click and choose Use Automatic Music Beat Detection. Now it gives me an error message. It says it can't handle portions of the clip because they're restricted. I'll show you what that's all about as we click on the OK button. All that means is that I have already edited the music clip. And when you remove anything, either at the front end, in the middle, or in the back, it will give you a red area and it says, I can't work with this because it's not here in your final product. So don't worry about this. Now, if you don't want to see this kind of an error message, the trick would be, is use your beat detection tool before you edit anything away from the original music clip. So we have two options with this beat detection. One is automatic, which is the lower left box, and the other is manual. I'm gonna show you the difference here between the two. It would seem like automatic would normally work best in every situation. Let's see how we do here. I'm gonna click the detect button and when I do that, it automatically uh, detects the beats that I see here on the screen. Then I'll click on the Apply button at the bottom. And now I have the beats here and I have the music. I'm going to uh, tighten up my visual here a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and play it and see where we're at. Okay, this is one place where I want a picture to happen. Uh, so I'm going to give myself a little more screen room and we'll drag down one of these other images and it will stick to the detection mark. And now when it hits that, that moment, the, the image will change to one of my other pictures. <laughs> Okay, let's put another one at this mark. It looks like this would work. We'll drop down to another clip and we'll put it right here. And we'll double check and make sure the timing looks good. Mm -hmm. 
Now, the next time we find that same rhythm, it's not on the beat detection mark. It's over here. We could go ahead and manually edit this point in time and kind of guess where it hits. And we could right click here and add a timeline marker, not a beat marker, but a timeline marker. And we could adjust that way. But we've already noticed that it hit the first one of the first beat markers perfectly, the second one too, but this one, it didn't hit the same way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the other method. I'm going to control Z out of some of these changes here. And we'll use the second method for beat detection, which I often prefer. So what I'm going to do is we'll make this a little larger here. We'll right click on our audio track again and also choose Use Automatic Beat Detection. Same error message, but now I'm going to use the manual beat detector. Now when I hold the mouse over the Add button, I have the uh, A in brackets at the end. That means I can just press the A key on the keyboard. And so what I'm going to do is play it in the preview mode. And every time I want to use a beat in my particular application, I will press the A key and let's see how that works. I'll go ahead and play and my fingers just above the A key. Okay, those are the ones that I actually need. And if you want to see this more clearly, you can just magnify the waveform. And so these are the ones that I manually added in this particular situation. So I'm going to apply my manual beat detector clips. And now we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of room. I'm just going to put the four in here because I know these are four that I want to use. We'll use one here. I could overlay them and we'll get into that in another lesson. And let's see, I wanted to use uh, this one too. And let's see if the timing works a little bit better using this particular method. So I'm going to start at the beginning of my clip. And we'll go ahead and play and you should see the pictures change pretty much on the beat. Okay, I like the way it turned out. So I'd like to encourage you, you can use the automatic detection tool and sometimes it's all you need. But if you want something slightly different, uh, a little more controllable, you can use the manual method as well. And in this case, it works out great. We're going to use another lesson with the same tutorial and show you a little bit more about the process of dealing with keyframes and copying keyframe attributes. Because we're not going to fill the whole screen with these four clips, just part of it. Mm -hmm.